I'll explain to you today, the two questions in red. What's the strategy for exploration beyond low Earth orbit? And how should the crew, the people, be carried to low Earth orbit, to Leo, low Earth orbit? So this is actually, I think, the most important figure uh, in the report. So let me explain. You start in the upper left, which was the starting point of our discussion over the summer, over this four-month period. And we had before us the question of what do we do with the International Space Station? Do we, do, do we go to the moon as the next objective? Do we go to the Mars, to Mars as the next objective? Or do we follow what we called in the report this flexible path where we defer the decisions about exactly where and when to go into the future while building the capability to do these missions? So the first decision, as I already mentioned, was to decide that the International Stage Stage, the Space Station, MKS, was a, an important, a critical part of any of these plans. And that the, the Space Station should be used not only for experiments in low Earth orbit, but as a way to prepare us to leave Earth by developing new technologies by understanding how to, by understanding how to work and build larger spacecraft that would be necessary to leave Earth. So the first decision we made was to put the ISS on the path to explore space. There were many who wanted to close the space station in order to go and take the next step, but we said that's not the right thing. The next decision we made was that Mars is not the next place to go. That going to Mars, which requires 900 days away from Earth, which requires going to another planetary surface and living there for almost 300 days, that this is too big a step. So Mars moves from being the immediate objective to being the ultimate objective. So now the question is, if we finish our work or continue our work on the ISS, should we go to the moon on the way to Mars, or should we go through this flexible path, which includes places such as asteroids and, and orbiting planets? So to understand the next step, you have to imagine that in 2000, the 2030 or 2040, you were the president of the Russian Federation. Maybe someone in this room will. I hope someone in this room. And, and the space planners come to you and say, Господин Президент, we have spent 20 years going to the moon, and now it's time to go to Mars. But in going to the moon, we've never been more than three and a half days away from Earth. Are you ready to approve a plan to send Russian cosmonauts into space for 900 days? I think most future presidents of the Russian Federation would say the answer to this question is no. We need more experience. So you don't go to the moon on the way to Mars. Now, maybe someone in this room will be the president of the United States in 2030, 2040. There's maybe a few candidates. And imagine going to the President of the United States in 2030 or 2040 
and saying, Mr. President, we've spent 20 years learning to work in space, visiting asteroids, orbiting Mars, but, but no human has landed on any other planet since 1972, 60 years ago. Are you ready to send American astronauts to the surface of Mars? Probably no. So what we concluded is that on the way to Mars, you would have to do both of these things. You would have to both go and learn how to land on a planetary surface, like the moon, and go and learn how to fly far away from Earth into space. So we decided that this is the real option, that we start with the International Space Station, and ultimately we go to Mars. And on the way, we either go to the moon and then into deep space, or we go into deep space and then to the moon. And I'll explain which one we chose later. But the important point is, this is the optimal objective. And on the way, you have to do both of these experiences. So one of the decisions, decision five, as it was reported in the report, is what is the strategy for the exploration of LEO? And the answer was, we go to Mars, but with some test flights to the moon. I'm sorry, the, 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 it, that one's excluded. We, we either go to the moon first or the flexible path first. Now, if you don't go to the moon as the next objective, where would you go? So it turns out that there are a series of destinations that go through what we'll call the flexible path, and then the moon, and then Mars, which are progressively more difficult. That is to say, they require more and more energy, and more and more time away from Earth. So this scale on the bottom is a measure of the energy beyond low Earth orbit in kilometers per second of uh, velocity. So you see that without landing on a planetary surface, we can go to the Lagrange points, to the points around Earth and Moon, which have neutral gravity. We can go to lunar orbit, we can go to the Lagrange points of the Earth and the Sun. And then, most interestingly, we can go to asteroids, particularly Earth-crossing asteroids, and we can go and fly by the Moon. Not land, not even go into orbit, but fly by. This would be about a 300-day trip. And it actually takes less energy to fly by the Moon than it does to go to the surface, uh, to fly by Mars, I'm sorry. It takes less energy to fly by Mars than it does to go to the surface of the Moon. Because the Moon is a significant gravity well. So you have to go down propulsively into the gravity well and then come back up out of the gravity well. So then you could start to go to moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos, and then finally to the surface of the Moon, uh, the surface of the so this, there's a natural progression in these things. So the goal that we say is to expand beyond the Earth, uh, the Earth-Moon system as quickly as possible, traveling to many places, many places in the inner solar system, meeting with planets, meeting with small bodies, asteroids and comets, but not actually going to the surface of them the large bodies, not descending to the surface. And for the larger bodies, the, the crew, like say Mars, the crew arrives and it conducts uh, automatic probes, it sends automatic probes to the planets, to the surface. So this is really a new strategy for exploring space. That it isn't essential at first to put a human 
on the surface, that it's more important to send humans to the vicinity and collect scientific data. So this is just a graphic of the possible places, Mars and so forth. Now of these, unquestionably, besides Mars and the Moon, the most interesting uh, are the asteroids, the near-Earth objects, the asteroids that come to the vicinity of the Earth. These are interesting for several reasons. One is, uh, about every hundred million years, one of these hits the Earth. Right? The Cretaceous tertiary extinction was because of an asteroid striking in the vicinity of Mexico. All killed all the dinosaurs. So it's important for our survival on Earth to understand more about these objects and how one might potentially deflect one or destroy one if it was on a path to Earth. The second is that these asteroids contain much information. There are different types. And the different types of asteroids contain different information about the formulation of, this, of the solar system, planetary formulation. And third, from a technological perspective, these asteroids are full of useful materials and that they're the change in energy necessary to deflect an asteroid so that it could be mined of materials is much smaller than the energy that would be required to lift the material from Earth or from the Moon or from Mars. That this material is almost free in space, almost without cost. Of course, you have to mine and refine it. So there's very significant interest in going to these near-Earth objects or near-Earth asteroids. So what we laid out in this chart is a plan that we would, that we would take steps into space of increasingly more and more difficulty. So that the first place to go would be a flyby of the moon, just basically as a practice point. And then we would go to the Lagrange point between Earth and moon, L1. This is an important point because some scientific spacecraft will be located here. And it's, the, it's a very good place for a operations base if you're going farther out a way station, a service station, that you really want to get high, to a higher energy orbit than low Earth orbit to do this. Then we would go to an Earth-Sun Lagrange point. And this is where advanced observatories would be located, such as the James Webb Space Telescope. Then we'd go to near-Earth objects of increasingly more and more uh, duration and energy change then to a flyby of Mars, and then to Mars orbit, and then to the moons of Mars, and then eventually to the surface of Mars. And the interesting column here is this one. This is roughly how many days away from Earth the, the crew, the pilots, the astronauts and cosmonauts would be. How far away. And you see by putting the events in this sequence, the, the, the events are 10 days, 20 days, 30 days, 90 days, 200 days, 400 days, 800 days. So it provides a set of experiments that we can do to make sure that the crew, the, the cosmonauts, the astronauts, will actually be able to function for this long because of effects of radiation, because of effects of weightlessness, and because of social phenomena. How would it feel to be, as a, as a, as a crew member, 300 days away from Earth, with not much to do for 300 days? What would it do to your mind? We have to make sure that the crew would be healthy, both physically and mentally, when they got to Mars. So this is really, in some sense, the key organizing factor, because the big